All right. Hi, everybody. So in this lesson here, we're going to be using trig ratios to find side lengths. Okay. Um, and you're going to find that uh, based on a kind of a re reference to a previous lesson where we're using trig ratios to find angles here, this is maybe a little bit more straightforward because it's, it's more like the way uh, you would use the calculator. It, it's just about using the one button there. You don't have to use a second, you don't have to use the second button to access anything. You can just use the sine, cos, and tan buttons on your calculator. Now, there are two, two ways or two types of questions we're going to look into here. One is when we're looking for a value in the numerator, and the other is going to be where we're looking for a value in the denominator. Okay? But the approach is, is basically the same here. Uh, except for one last little little action here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to identify that reference angle, okay? Because that is going to help us label. Labeling is important, okay? And that's and that's what this next step is here. So we find out which angle is the one that's of significance. It's either the one we're looking for, or the one we're given. And in this place, sorry, in this particular question here, the type of question, it will be given. That helps us label it. Why is labeling so important? Because the labeling helps us choose which ratio uh, that we're looking for, okay, whether it's sine, cos, or tan. And then, once we've done that, we're going to use the calculator. Okay, We use the calculator to convert the angle to a ratio. And then... We cross multiply to solve. And I know this is kind of written there, but I just want to make sure that we get this, this first little bit here that what we're going to do to start off with is we're going to use the calculator to convert the angle to a ratio. Okay. And I you're going to see as I work through this, I'm going to leave that number on my calculator. And I'll, I'll talk about that as we get to it here. But let's take a look at some examples uh, to maybe help clarify this. Okay, so let's walk through some of these questions. So to start off with, you're going to find x uh, in this problem here. Now, the first thing we focus our attention on here is the angle that we're given. That's That angle here is going to help us label everything. Um, the hypotenuse is always going to be the hypotenuse. Over here, this would be our opposite side. And the side that's being used to build the angle, this is going to be our adjacent. And remember, that angle, the reason for that, that angle is so significant is it helps us do that labeling. Now, when I take a look at what I'm given here, okay, I am looking for the adjacent side, and I know the hypotenuse. So I, I don't know anything about the, the, op the opposite, but I also don't care. Okay? I really don't care about the opposite. So what trig function do I know of that combines the adjacent and the hypotenuse? And the answer is that's cosine. So the cosine of 39 degrees is going to equal the adjacent side, which is my unknown, my x, over 4. Now, <clears throat> what I can do here is I'm going to go to my calculator, and I'm going to use the calculator to convert uh, 39 degrees into a ratio here. And that's just as simple as pressing the cos button and then the 39 degrees afterwards. I'm just making sure that I'm in degree mode here. And when you do that, you're going to get a number that's approximately 0 0.7771. Now, the decimal goes on uh, a fair bit longer than that. And I would leave that decimal in my calculator. I wouldn't, I wouldn't get rid of it. I wouldn't just use 0 0.7771. But it is, it is traditional for us to write the ratio to four decimal places. Okay, That used to be, before calculators, that used to be how they would build the charts. The charts would go to four decimal places. And then we put this over one. And now we're going to cross multiply. So it'll be four times 0 0.7771 is going to equal one times x, which is just x. And then when I multiply this out on the left-hand side here, I get, well, it's going to be approximately 3.1. I'm going to round that to 3.1. But I would, I would multiply the, the 4 by that entire decimal, not just this 0.7771. I would, the whole decimal that's in my calculator, that's what I would use. Okay, now we go to the next question here. So 73 degrees, again, that's the angle that's important uh, right here. My hypotenuse is going to be 13. That's not going to change here. Um, 
the X here, the thing that I'm looking for is opposite the 73 degrees. And then the side that's that's next to it is my adjacent. Now, again, I am looking for the op the opposite side here, and I've been given the hypotenuse. I I haven't been given the adjacent, and I'm not even asking you for the adjacent. I don't care. So what trig function relates the opposite and the hypotenuse? And that is going to be the sine. So the sine of 73 degrees is going to equal the ratio, the length of the opposite side, and I don't know what that is, whoops, over the hypotenuse. So I was going to write hypotenuse, but in this case, I know what that number is. It is 13. So now I go to my calculator and I press the sine of 73 degrees. So sine 73, press enter, and I'm going to get 0.9563. Okay, and there's more to it than that, but I'm going to go to four decimal places. Equals x over 13. And again, I treat that as if it's over 1. I will cross multiply. And then 1 times x is just x. And when I multiply that out, and again, I'm going to use 13 multiplied by that entire decimal that I get there, I will get approximately 12.4. And then for this question over here, here's the angle that I'm given. Okay, so again, the hypotenuse is opposite that right angle, so it kind of stands out on its own. Uh, the x here, the thing that I'm looking for is the opposite side. The adjacent is the side that is right next to the 53 that gets, you know, we use the adjacent and the hypotenuse to build the angle. Well, I, I'm looking for the opposite. I have been given the hypotenuse, and I don't care about the uh, adjacent. So again, this is the sine ratio. So the sine of 53 degrees is going to equal the opposite over the hypotenuse, 14. I go to my calculator and I enter the sine of 53 degrees, and I'm going to get 0 0.7986. So the calculator knows what this ratio should be. I put that over 1, and then I cross multiply. 1 times x is x. And when I multiply that out, I will get that x is approximately equal to 11.2. Okay? So what we're making use of here is the fact that the calculator knows what these given ratios should be. Okay? And then I can use that to calculate that, that piece that's missing. Okay, now we're going to take a look at basically the same problem, but now the unknown is going to be in the denominator, okay? And so what does that do? Well, not, not much. The first thing we're going to do is find that reference angle. Okay, that was the same thing as before. Why is that significant? Well, it helps us with the relative labeling, which allows us to choose a ratio here. Okay, then what we're going to do is we're going to use the calc to convert the angle to a ratio, okay, we cross multiply, and then here's the next thing here, and divide to get our answer, okay, and it's this last little bit here, and it was written right here, and so I'll write right here, it's the last little bit of division that you have to do, and we have to do that because the unknown is in the denominator, okay. So let's take a look at some problems here just to see how they work. So, for example, in this case right here, here's our reference angle, okay, which is going to make, the, well, this wouldn't matter whether or not that was the reference angle or not. That's the hypotenuse. But this is going to be the opposite. And this side right here, because I'm using it to build that 60 degrees, this is the adjacent. Now, I've given you the adjacent. I'm looking for the hypotenuse. I don't care about the opposite. So what trig function does that? Well, the trig, or the trig ratio, I should say, that is going to be the cosine. So the cosine of 60 degrees is going to equal the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And just notice how this looks different than what we've done before. In this case, the unknown, the thing that I don't know, is in the denominator. So I'm going to go to my calculator, enter in the cosine of 60 degrees, and I get actually a really nice 0 0.5. 
Okay, this isn't one of these ongoing uh, non-terminating decimals. It's exactly 0.5. So now I cross multiply. And then 12.9 times 1 is just 12.9. Now here's the difference. So now what I got to do to get the x by itself is I have to do this one extra little bit of this little step here of division. And 12.9 divided by 0.5 is going to give you 25.8. And now you've seen me use the little dot above the equal sign to indicate an approximation where I rounded. But in this case, the 0.5 was exact. I didn't have to round that. And so the answer that I get here of 25.8, that's exact. So that's that's wonderful. I love when that happens. So here's my, my angle in this next question here. Uh, the hypotenuse is going to be opposite the 90 degree. Uh, the 3, because of the fact that I'm looking at this 53 degrees, the opposite side here is, is going to be 3. And this x here, this is going to be my adjacent side. So what trig uh, function here doesn't, doesn't worry about the hypotenuse? And the answer is that's tangent. So the tangent of 53 degrees is going to be the opposite side, 3, over x. And again, notice, notice that uh, the x is in the denominator. So the tangent of 53 is going to be 1.3270, and that decimal does go on a bit longer, so I would leave that in my calculator. And this is going to equal 3 over x. And I would just interpret that as being over 1. And now I'm going to cross multiply. So 1.3270 times x equals 3. And now I would divide. Whoops. Actually, I have been typically changing, changing colors when I do that division. So I'm going to do that again. I'm going to divide by that 1.3270. Now, again, um, I would leave that tangent ratio on my calculator when I do this so that I'm dividing by the whole decimal and just it just reduces the error here and when I do so in this case I will round this and this will be approximately 2.3 and now finally this one right here here's my angle uh, we're looking for X which is the hypotenuse here it looks like I've been given the opposite side and this side down here is the adjacent side. But you know what? I'm not even asking you for it. I'm not giving any information about it. So it's clearly not a, a, a cosine problem or a problem that requires the adjacent side. So it's the opposite in the hypotenuse. And that is going to be the sine. Sine of 35 degrees is going to equal 9 over, sorry, 9 over the hypotenuse. So sine of 35 is 0.5736 when I enter that on my calculator. And that'll be 9 over x. So I'm going to write this as over 1. Cross multiply is equal to 1 times 9, which is 9. And then I'm going to divide by this 0.5736. And again, I would leave that whole decimal in my calculator. So I would divide. I would go 9 divided by that answer that I found. Okay, that number there so that I, I minimize the rounding errors. But either way, if I'm rounding to the nearest tenth, it shouldn't be too bad here. So 15.7 will be my answer. Okay, and there you go. So, And those are the two different types of problems that you're going to get here when we're looking for a, a side length. You're either going to look, use the trig ratio to find the numerator, or you're going to use the trig ratio to find the denominator. Okay, it just depends on how the information is provided to you, which one you're going to do.